my yeah. dears, it's me, Ordinary Girl, trying to be fabulous, and welcome to my channel, welcome to my subscribers, and welcome to my non-subscribers. If you are not subscribed, I hope you will consider doing so, um, if you enjoy my content, and I hope you'll consider subscribing even if you don't enjoy my content. I'll never tell. So, a couple things about me. I am a dog mom to two amazing rescue dogs. There is Olivia, and she is a nine-year-old Japanese chin. Um, she is the princess of the house, and that is just as it should be. And then there's this little squirt blossom named Annie. She's a 30-year-old border terrier. She has been an education, but she's my love bug. So, um, let's talk about my channel. Uh, my channel, I do reviews. I do cooking videos. I do anti-multi-level marketing. I do commentary. See, I already said I did cooking videos. Um, I've done hauls and some history. So today, I'm going to take you through the steps to make my mom's fruitcake, but don't worry, I'm going to get right into that. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, tell the story about my mom's fruitcake. Uh, but if you would like, after I, after I go through the steps, if you would like to hear that, um, I'm going to tell the story. It's just like when I, you know, I'm looking for recipes online and, um, you know, you get, you get like a page of, of text and the recipes all the way at the bottom. Like somebody has a word count, a minimum word count they have to do. And, um, honestly, I don't care about your auntie Nini and how fruitcakes remind you of Sundays on the farm. I just want the recipe. So that's why the story is going to be at the end. And I hope you will stick around that long. So uh, let's talk about that. Okay, let's get into making a fruitcake. I will tell you that my mom got her fruitcake recipe from a lady at church. But that's all I'm going to say about that until the end. So you take one cup of chopped dates, one cup of seedless raisins, two thirds of a cup of butter, one and a quarter cup of packed brown sugar, a quarter cup of unsulfured molasses, and one and a half cups of hot water. Melt it all together and then bring it to a boil and boil gently for about three minutes. After you have boiled the mixture, allow it to cool in a large bowl. And then beat two eggs into the cooled mixture. When I added the eggs, it was still quite warm. So just to be on the safe side, I tempered the eggs. And I will include an article on tempering your eggs um, in the description box down below. I could not find candied orange peel anywhere, so I made my own. And I will include a recipe for that too down below. Add two cups of candied fruit to the mixture in any combination. My mother personally hates citron, so she wrote in big letters, no citron. And add one cup of chopped walnuts. Sift together half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon of soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one teaspoon of salt, and then sift three cups of plain flour. So after you've sifted all that, you gradually add the flour mixture to the fruit and nut mixture until, you know, it's well mixed together, well incorporated. So these fruit cakes are going to be gifts 
and I pour the mixture into these cute little King Arthur flower gift pans. The recipe makes six mini loaf pans of fruitcake. I put the pans on a very sturdy cookie sheet and put it in the oven. You preheat your oven to 275 degrees and you bake your fruit cakes for two and a half hours. And when the fruit cake is done, you will stick a toothpick in the center and it will come out clean. So when I was looking up the history of fruit cake, it reminded me of a really sweet movie called A Christmas Memory that I watched when I was in the seventh grade and I mean if you like Christmas movies that are really sweet um this is one I mean cuz at the end I cried and I don't even know why I cried cuz I don't know if but uh it's just a really sweet movie and I highly recommend it if you can find it somewhere because I'm not going to tell you how long ago I was in the seventh grade. And this is from um, a Truman Capote short story in 1956. Of course, I wasn't in the seventh grade in 1956, but I was in the seventh grade quite a while ago. So I don't know if this movie is still available. So um, my family loves fruitcake. I do not. But every year I make them fruitcake because they love it. And uh, it's just a really nice thing to do. And it's something I like to do. So, um, and then, you know, I found the story when I was looking up uh, the history of fruitcake. Because in my experience, I was told the legend of the fruitcake and that fruitcake was an accident. That somebody was trying to make plum pudding and they added too much flour or cooked it too long or something like that and they got fruitcake. So of course I will also link the article that I got this information from down below because obviously we want to give people credit. But fruitcake has been around since ancient Roman times. Um, you may know fruitcake has its roots in England, but that's not where it originated. And I was surprised because, like I said, I heard the story that someone was making a plum pudding and they accidentally made fruitcake and it stuck. For those of us who like don't like fruitcake, that's unfortunate. But that's not the truth. It has been around since ancient Roman times. Um, it was sort of like our version of a energy bar so let's see it was made of pine nuts oh I like pine nuts barley mash never had that pomegranate raisins and honey wine and shaped into a cake it was called a satura because it was easy to carry around and it lasted for a long time without going bad and if you know fruit cakes they can last a long time without going bad. Like the ones I make are better if you let them sit for two weeks. So, you know, you let let the, the spices ruminate and, and all that stuff like that. They're, they're better off if you, if you let them rest for two weeks. Um, I've heard that people feed their fruit cake with brandy and since I I have wanted to try to feed my fruit cake with brandy, so hopefully it wouldn't be so dry. But since I make it in a loaf pan, um, I don't know how that would work. You know, feeding it with brandy, because the way you the way you feed it with brandy is you know um, originally like my mom's recipe, you bake it in a tube pan. So what you do is you like cover the fruit cake and then you have a glass of brandy that you put in the tube and you sit the fruit cake down on the glass of brandy and it's covered so you know the fruit cake absorbs the brandy um, and I put mine in loaf pans so I don't think 
they would work to feed them with brandy. So, no feeding it with brandy. Besides, I don't really drink. I don't think that, um, I couldn't, unless I could get like a travel size bottle of brandy. Uh, but other than that, I don't, I don't drink, I don't consume alcohol. Just my own personal conviction. Oh, once fruitcakes included meat. During Shakespearean times, it was made up of meat, wine, sherry, fruit juices, and some preserved fruit. Let's see, meat was eliminated, and more fruit was added in its place. And then it became known as a plum pudding, which was basically a plum cake. Okay, so that's where the story of the plum pudding came. And modern fruitcake can be traced back to the Middle Ages. Um, sugar became cheaper. And you can use it to preserve fruits, which is, um, you know, I made the candied orange peel myself because I could not find any orange peel. So when you soak fruit in sugar, you dry them. And it's added to the cake and nuts were also added Wow uh, in the 18th century fruitcake was outlawed I surely wouldn't miss fruitcake honestly um, you could you could outlaw it I wouldn't be upset it was considered too good and at that time they were known as plum cakes they are sinfully rich but that didn't last very long because fruitcake came back to being super popular. I mean, could you imagine <laughs> in the in the middle in the middle century, you go up to some uh, lady's house and you're like, you have the secret knock, you know, and and uh, you have to give the secret code, and she gives you a fruitcake on the sly. <laughs> I just. You know, just like prohibition, if you outlaw something, um, it's just going to make people want it more. In the 1800s, people put fruitcake under their pillows. Unmarried wedding guests would put fruitcake under their pillow at night so they could dream about the person they would eventually marry. Maybe that's the only good thing about fruitcake. Maybe I should put some fruitcake under my pillow. And fruitcake became the kind of cake that they serve at British weddings. Like, um, I watch Downton Abbey a lot. It's one of my favorite TV shows. And whenever they're making a wedding cake, and it's just so beautiful, and I think that underneath all that beautiful ornamental frosting is a fruitcake, I'm just, it's a fruitcake. Yuck. It has been served at special occasions by the British royal family. Um, Kate Middleton and Prince William served fruitcake at their own wedding ceremony because it's tradition. But uh, the, the, the brother and his wife, whose name escapes me at the moment, they did things right. And I believe they served a lemon cake with elderberry filling, which is actually edible, unlike fruitcake. So people started selling fruitcakes by mail in 1913. Someone took fruitcake to the moon. In 1969, fruitcake took a right to the moon. Uh, pineapple fruitcake was brought on the Apollo 11 space mission, but it was never eaten. You can still get a glimpse of that fruitcake as it's on display at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. And I'm sure that as fruitcake, you could probably eat it now even though it was over 50 years ago. Because fruitcake doesn't go bad. Johnny Carson. Battery low. Oh, really? It's my little thing. Um, Johnny Carson made fruitcake a joke. Let me turn off. Well, Johnny Carson made fruitcake a joke. 
the worst Christmas gift is fruitcake. There's only one fruitcake in the entire world, and people keep sending it to each other. Well, my fruitcakes aren't the only ones in the entire world. But, and I'm, I'm pretty sure my family eats, eats them up. But that's funny stuff. We don't know why we eat it during Christmas. I don't know either. Except, you know, um, like Thanksgiving and Christmas are pretty, uh, like spicy holidays where you make spicy type food. You know, eggnog and, um, pumpkin pie. And probably, I would imagine that that's when the candied fruit was available, during Christmas. There are variations of fruitcake all over the world. Like, uh, there's panettone, which I also make for my family because they seem to like it. In Germany, there's Stalin. Stalin. Um, panettone. And in Jamaica, there's rum-soaked black cake. It's cool. So that is the history of fruitcake. A little bit of history of fruitcake, which I will obviously link this article down below. And I really appreciate y'all for coming with me and uh, making a fruitcake, making a couple fruitcakes. And um, thank you. I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye. Uh, my little my little uh, thingy is burned out. I need to charge it, so I'm gonna have to reach up here and turn this off. Thank you. Bye.